Colnidra Night, as we call it, in two notes. Before we get to the Colney Dre itself, another example of those two notes. Slichot, our collection of prayers of forgiveness, is a ceremony, a ritual ceremony, a prayer service that begins on the Saturday evening before Rosh Hashanah. And the Slichot liturgy is really kind of a mini Yom Kippur prayers of forgiveness and prayers of confession. Kind of a mini Yom Kippur. But one of the opening prayers of Slichot is the Chatzit Kaddish, the shortened version of the Kaddish. And its traditional melody, first heard every year on Slichot, really is marked by two pitches. The same two pitches that begin Kol Nidre that give it its special power and attaches us to these special moments in time through melody. That Kaddish begins this way. Yit Kadal. Those second two notes. Ah. A half step. Ah. And it repeats again. As soon as we hear those two notes, half step interval down, we are transported to a certain place, more importantly, a certain time, a moment in time. It is slichot, and more powerfully, it is time for the high holidays. And even more potently, it is shadowing Yom Kippur. In fact, in particular, Kol Nidre. Probably the most well-known and popular quote-unquote Jewish melody in all the world, Kol Nidre. It became so well-known and so popular that a number of classical composers chose that particular pattern of, of notes and inserted them in numerous classical compositions. Many of us are very familiar with Max Bruch uh, and his composition entitled Kol Nidre, which is really a, a cello concerto. And a good bit of that piece follows the uh, tradition of our Kol Nidre prayer. It makes some, some deviations from it, uh, but is based completely on our traditional melody. So two bits of, I think, important uh, information about Kol Nidre. One is the text itself. We know that the text, those words, Kol Nidre Esare, Aramaic, and we also made a discovery years ago they found in archaeological digs in Syria, buried in the ground were these magical bowls. They believed in magic and the power of magic and the power of curses, and words. And on some of these magical bowls were found under homes, written on those bowls were the words, Kol Nidre Va Esare, as a way to block evil spells to keep their homes safe from evil language, curses. They believe words had magical powers. And Kol Nidre is based upon that. Right? It's about our words and our vows. Now we bring it all the way forward. When do we first discover the melody that we all recognize as the quote-unquote traditional Ashkenazic melody for Kol Nidre? Sometime in the 16th century, we first have references that describe this particular, particular melody of falling half steps, 16th century. And that melody, once it was finished being composed, so to speak, by different people in different parts of the world, and finally it comes together as this full composition that we all know as Kol Nidre. But essentially, it's those first two 
notes that give it its power and its immediate recognizability. And because of that, that moment, we hear that half step, descending half step, and so powerful, it has left an indelible musical imprint on the minds and the hearts of Jews for all time when we hear those opening notes of Kol Nidre. Kol Nidre. As Hillel might have said, the rest is commentary. Go and listen to it. But those first two notes, in a, in, in a way that is the power of only music, two notes, two pitches, we are again transported into this amazing power of community that binds us all together in perhaps the most intense and tense moment of the entire Jewish year. Kol Nidre, Yom Kippur, evening, in just two notes. Tequila!